Hey everyone, this is Dimitri Pargamonic with MarketChameleon.com. In this video, we're going to go over an example of a calendar call spread. We're going to go over the potential risks and rewards of a calendar spread and ideal in an ideal situation when you would want to do this type of trade. So I'm going to just go here to the SPY options chain and we're going to use this options chain and a payout diagram to draw the example and then talk a little bit about um, what what this would look like uh, at an expiration. So the first thing is, what is the calendar call spread? You're going to be doing two different options. One, you're going to be uh, buying a, a call option on one expiration, and then you're going to sell a call option at the same strike at a different expiration. So that's why it's a calendar spread. You're using two different expiration months um to do this spread now typically for whatever reason people would like to sell an option from um the near term near, near term expiration and buy an option on the same strike uh on a far further out expiration so i'm going to use that as the first example and take a look at um the payout diagram and talk a little bit about the risks and rewards so i'm going to go out to the first leg of the spread and here we see june 15th in spy and this has seven trading days to go so let's just use the at the money strike here 311 and i'm going to sell this option so i'm going to sell the call on a 311 strike with seven trading days to go so we see here right now it's four dollars and two cents and then i'm going to go out a little bit further out and let's just say we go out to june 30th expiration and we're gonna buy an option so i'm gonna use the same strike now this has 18 trading days to go i'm gonna buy this for 620 so now we did a spread so we see here 402 620 i'm gonna load that strategy and look at the payout diagram here so here's the thing about a calendar spread unlike a vertical spread where all the options expire in the same month we see that number one this option will expire on june 15th but this june 30th option will still have time value right so both of them are not expiring one is going to go to parity it's either going to be worth worth um the difference between the strike and the stock price or it'll be worthless depending where the stock is but the other option will still have some time premium given that it's not possible to draw an exact payout diagram so what you could do is estimate what do we think when this option expires what will the next option be worth and you would have to estimate it based on where you think the implied volatility will be at that time so in this example, we see that we paid $2.18 for that calendar spread. We sold the June 15th for 402. We bought the June 30th call 311 for 620. So we we net paid $2.18. Now, ideally, what we want to happen at expiration is when this expires, this June 15th expiration, we sold this call. So we want this, this 402 to go to zero. We want that call to be worthless, right? Because we sold it, if it's worthless and we don't even have to buy back, that's great. And we want this option on June 15th expiration. We need it to be obviously as much because we own it, we want it to be worth as much as possible, but really we need it to be worth more than $2.18 for this to be profitable because we paid two dollars and 18 cents on june 15th expiration if we close out both legs we want it to be above two dollars and 18 cents for this strategy to be profitable on this june 15th expiration so let's take a look at the diagram below and what this is doing is saying this is the payout diagram on june 15th expiration it's recalculating on what what this option the june 30th option would be if we use the same implied volatility as today so 
right now is just assuming implied volatilities did not change at all. And if it's the same implied volatility, this is what the payout diagram would look like. And you see here the peak, your best, your your highest profit would be if it if the stock is exactly at the the same strike that you sold the 311 strike um and then you could see as it's moving away your profits are going down in both directions and here is the range of your your in this green that's the range of prices where it's going to be profitable assuming the implied volatility didn't change and as it's moving further away you see that it becomes unprofitable so why is that the case since we paid a debit for the spread right we paid the we paid money for it the highest time premium the most time premium it's going to have is if the stock is right at the strike as it's as the stock is moving away from this strike the time premium in both options is it, it's going less and less eventually they become the further away it goes to the downside both of these are going to move in closer and closer to being worthless as the stock just keeps dropping away and the further the stock moves higher and higher both both of these options are moving closer to parity one for one with the stock and there's less time premium so that's that's here important because where do you want the stock to be in this setup you want it to be as close to these strikes very little movement around these strikes that's one of your outlooks the other outlook that you have is you want you want the these the front month to decay but what you're hoping here is that this back this option that you bought in the further out month that the implied volatility increases because you don't want the implied vol your long vega your long that option you see here your long vega you want the implied volatility to increase hopefully stay the same but you want this option not to decay or not to decay as fast and you want that implied volatility to go up um typically though what you see is the other way right as we move closer to expiration so let's take a look here you see here how these these options the implied volatility is moving up as you get closer to expiration there's more certainty the implied volatility comes in that's what you typically see um when you would want to do something like this as if you think the implied volatility is is too low and that back month should increase um by this expiration or maybe there's like an event somebody's not pricing in and you think the implied volatility will increase um in this expiration and you're giving it some time for that to happen uh so for example like maybe a biotech stock where you think well this june 30th expiration is going to cover it cover the event this june 15th doesn't cover it maybe the events on june 29th so in situations like that that's when sometimes the that time spread if it's priced correctly can become um, a good trade setup now let's take a look at what if the implied volatility does come in what if it you know today it's 20.3 nothing's happening both options are decaying but the implied volatility is coming in so i'm going to use this over here and just let's bring that in a little bit right let's say decays to 18.3 like over here 18.6 i'm going to rerun it so remember this front one this is going to expire um worthless at this expiration but you could see here that what happened is the implied volatility decreased at expiration this peak it's lower it's not as profitable um if it just sits there and you could see that the range of prices that that move away from the at the money where you're profitable has also shrunk so you see here this from this side to this side there's less less uh opportunities to make money um given the range of prices where the stock can expire let's say it goes the other way right so right here it's right now at this peak we're making one 179 if these implied volatilities drop to here what if we increase the implied volatilities and assume implied vols go up 
So now I'm just increasing this to 23.3. So this should go up in the range of prices that um, that this will be profitable will go up, will will stretch out as well. So let's take a look here. Let's do it to 25. So increase the implied vol. Let's rerun it. So you see how this stretched out this green and then the peak now is 368. So there are two things playing here, decay and the difference in the implied volatilities, right? So you wanna see if the implied volatility in that back month is low and you're playing the implied volatility increasing over time that these options decay and the stock doesn't move very far away. That's the calendar spread. One more thing we could take a look at is what if you think that the stock will drift? It might not, you have a target price, today it's 311, you think it'll drift up a little bit, right? So let's change that. Instead of 311, we think that that in the next eight days or whatever, it'll drift up 1.2%, let's say two, or let's say to 314, right? One and a half percent, um, that the stock will drift slowly up there and settle there. So then what you would wanna do is instead of doing these at the at the money, I'm gonna increase both strikes. So now we're at 314, right? So you would sell the 314 call on June 15th, buy the 314 call June 30th. So you see here this peak, it's gonna shift from 311. So now you see here 314, that's that's where your ideal ideal uh spot is for the for that stock to expire on the June 15th expiration. So these are the these are the different risks and potential rewards um, and also the different outlooks you have when you're putting on a calendar spread. And then we'll follow up with a video how to test is the is the spread uh, priced rich, is it cheap and based on historicals where do where are the different possibilities that it could end up on this June 15th expiration? Uh, thanks everyone for watching. See you in the next video.